You know, one of the things that I find true about the Word of God is that more often than not, most people, when they go out of their way to interpret it or to change it in some way, it's always because of something that they run into personally. You know, it seems as though that they they discover that there's something that they can't deal with that rather than admit it, you know, maybe find out that their perspective is wrong or their idea is wrong or maybe they've got the wrong interpretation in some way or some kind of some kind of way they made a mistake they change the word of god to fit what they want to believe in as opposed to finding themselves in error or wrong about it and saying hey i blew it you know i'm i'm human i made a mistake such as i am i am and uh, lately there seems to be that kind of tendency, especially among teachers of the word. You know, they, they get into this whole idea that they have to know it all. They have to have an answer for everyone every time. Instead of just admitting maybe they don't know the answer. Maybe they don't have all the answers. And they're afraid to quite admit that at a certain point in time. So what they do is they make up these excuses. And while they sound good on the surface, it catches up with them because someone else comes along who has the answer and then they discover, hmm, maybe, maybe the person should have admitted they didn't know in the first place rather than try to make up an answer to fit something they didn't know about. And a lot of times when it comes to judgment or hell or, or some of the harder statements that, you know, become confrontational, people tend to pull back. They say, oh, well, you know, I don't want to get into that. You know, that's, that's, that's interpretation. That's interpretive. And the bottom line is you really don't have that option because, frankly, the Bible is pretty clear. <laughs> It's not like it's hard to understand. I mean, there's a heaven and there's a hell. I mean, people right now are trying to invent this idea that there's no hell and that everybody's going to get there someday. That sounds so good, you know. But it also makes open a way that means Jesus died for no reason at all. Because, well, they don't want to admit they have a problem with judgment, that God's going to judge them. Now, you and I, I don't know about you, but I kind of like the idea of grace, you know? kind of means that since I can't change my nature, that I am a sinner, that I am guilty because I can't change the law. You know, I can't throw the law away. The law makes me guilty. Matter of fact, if wasn't for Christianity and the law from Judaism, I wouldn't even know I'm a sinner. <laughs> Imagine that. Going along without knowing that I was guilty. Well, now I know I'm guilty and God's standard is perfection and I know I can't meet it, so now I need grace. You know, I need I need favor. I need I need God to have mercy on me in some way that makes him, since he's the judge, accept me. And since Jesus said the only way to be accepted was through God's willingness to accept the death of his son in my place, I kind of don't have a lot of say in the matter, you know? I guess I have to take what, what God says at face value. I have to recognize that what Jesus did for me is the only thing that's going to make me acceptable to God. You know, when I do that, then I kind of realize, you know, maybe judgment and grace work together perfectly. Maybe maybe God does have it all under control. And maybe his word does make sense, and I don't need somebody to try to change it for me or to interpret it, but maybe 
God knows what he's doing. And I can just read it for what it says. And maybe I need to kind of deal with him personally so I don't get confused by all these other people that maybe because of some reason they have of their own that they don't understand God like I want to understand God or maybe they don't want to admit that they're wrong and maybe they just don't know how to deal with not having the answer but for myself I can say that I I relate to God you know I I go to him when I don't understand anything I frankly trust him you know I like to turn my life over to him I like to give him what I don't know so that he can give me what he does know and then I move forward in that and it seems like it makes perfect sense you know maybe for you maybe you can't admit being wrong at times <laughs> that could be a problem <laughs> maybe God will make you wrong so you could be right in Tozer, the pattern of unbelief begins at the Bible. It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. The present refusal of so many religious teachers to accept the doctrine of the wrath of God is a part of a larger pattern of unbelief that begins with doubt concerning the veracity of the Christian scriptures. They don't believe what the word says and that what it says it means. Let a man question the inspiration of the scriptures, and a curious, even monstrous, inversion takes place. Suddenly, that person begins to change. Therefore, he, thereafter, from that moment on, he judges the word instead of letting the word judge him. He's reversed the tables. He's put himself in charge, then letting God be in charge. He determines what the word should teach instead of permitting it to determine what he should believe. He edits and he amends it. He strikes out and adds at his pleasure. He makes it fit what he feels like. But always he sits above the word and makes it amenable to him instead of kneeling before God and becoming amenable to the word or changed to the word as God has said what the word is. Which really, if you take it literal, it is Jesus in every word and detail. Because that's just the way it is. <laughs> the way God wanted it. The way God said it. And that's the way God did it. The tender-minded interpreter who seeks to shield God from the implications of his own word is engaged in an officious effort that cannot be completely wasted. Why such a man still clings to the tattered relics of religion is hard to say. The manly thing would be to walk out on the Christian faith and put it behind him along with other outgrown toys and discredited beliefs of childhood. But this he rarely does because he can't admit he was wrong in front of others. He kills the tree but still hovers pensively over the orchard hoping for the fruit that never comes. He chooses rather to change the word of God to rearrange the Word of God, to make others follow his teaching, to look for that blessing from God as though God's going to say, yes, it's acceptable, you know, yes, because of grace I'm going to take what you're changing in my Word that rearranges to fit your idea and then now I'm going to bless it because it makes me look not like I'm in control, but you are. And sadly, today. There are many that follow that way. I don't know. The more I think about it, the more it makes me wonder, you know, what are they going to do when they stand before Jesus face to face?